Please listen carefully. Oi, eu sou o Guilherme Lugulo e esse é o podcast Eu Ator. Yeah. Oi, o episódio já vai começar, mas antes eu queria te dar um recado. O podcast agora tem uma conta no PicPay. O que você acha de ser um apoiador dessa ideia? Se você quiser unir forças com a arte e colaborar, o link está na descrição. Agora vamos ao episódio de hoje. We can start. We started already. That's how we go. It's just a chat about life and you know exchanging experiences. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the one, the only, Emra Faye Wright. Thank you so much for being here with us at the podcast Eu Ator. I'm sure uh, your life experience will touch uh, Brazilians' hearts and people will love to know more about you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I'm very, very happy to be here and I'm lovely to meet you. And, uh, you know, wherever Chicago is in the world, we're family. Yes, yeah. exactly. How it is. <laughs> so my first question is, how did you go from being a farmer into doing a, a one-woman show? How was that? <laughs> uh, well, I'd like to say it just was one day I woke up and said, that's what I want to do. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I, um, I trained as a classical dancer all my life. Um, and I had some, obviously when I became around about 17 or 18 years old, I, um, I had some bumps in the road and instead of following through in a career, I got married. So um, I ended up marrying a farmer and, uh, and actually it, it was uh, six years of um, really, really hard work. <laughs> I can imagine it. Harder than I've ever worked before. Um, but it was an interesting life, and uh, but it wasn't for me. And uh, so I, after six years, I, I actually did run a dancing school in the town when I was there. And um, and the thing is, you know, growing up in, in South Africa in a small town, there wasn't a, there wasn't a lot of theater. So we had to make our own. So right from a very young age, I... Um, I created my own shows and I created my own work and I wrote my own stories and and I've never really stopped doing that. Um, even though I've been doing the same show for many, many, many years in between that, I've, um, I've done all my other cabarets and told the stories that are that, you know, the things that have happened to me along the way, the experiences I've had before going into Chicago. And how was that like? Because you from East London in South Africa, so you said that there weren't a, a, a theater scene. How did you do it to to watch shows or to go to Cape Town? How was that? No, not really. Um, uh, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because uh, how do you know? How do you know what to do? Uh, I think first of all, there's musical movies, so there's that, you know. And I watched all of those. At, I went to the cinema for that. Um, but that, you know, and we had. Um, some people in my town who had been places and they produced some shows, you know. So I just learned what I could from what I saw. Um, sometimes, I don't know if this is really true, but sometimes when you haven't been um, exposed to what is going on, you come up with a different kind of way of doing things. And sometimes it's just terrible and it doesn't work. And other times it hits the spot or it's better or it's it's different and um I, i think growing up the way i did and not going directly into musical theater at a young age and trying all these different genres um has given me an, an edge that i only appreciated much much later in life you know i always thought that i had missed out you know i had missed out on not being growing up in a, in a really really strong theater scene or being, having access to the kind of training that I would have liked or, um, or knowing from a young age, I want to be on stage doing musical theater. That's what I want to do. I didn't know that. I didn't know what I wanted. I just, you know, went from whatever was in front of me, I took it and went further. And that was amazing. And then when did you really start? You were 27 when you really decided to do to the show, to go to the show business. And how, yeah. how, how, how did you start auditions? Then you left uh, East London. How was that? 
Yeah, well, I um, I was in a dire situation, and I, I felt like I needed to leave the town. I needed to to find my uh, my my footsteps in some other place, you know. Um, and I had heard from a friend uh, about Sun City in South Africa, which is a resort, and it has big sort of feather type shows like the Moulin Rouge and and, yes. and the Lido and so on. And um, and I had all this dancing ability, but you know, I wasn't doing anything with it. Um, and a friend said to me, you know, they're having auditions for this place. You must go fly to Durban and they'll be holding the auditions there. And I said, oh, they'll never take me. <laughs> <laughs> but I went anyway. And yeah. um, and to my surprise and, and, and absolute joy, they, they took me. You got the job. And, and I got the job and I thought, oh, that's it, I've arrived. I have, you know, there's nothing more in life that I want. <laughs> Yeah. And so, you know, I had a small child at the time. I packed up my baby and off I went to Sun City. And, and I ended up dancing there in those extravaganzas as a showgirl for about six years. Wow, six years. But while I was there, um, I, I, I started singing. I started, you know, doing odd shows here and there. Uh, um, and uh, I took some singing lessons. And I didn't think I was going to do anything with it. It was just a case of I need to do something more. Um, so I I started doing lessons and uh, and then after those six years I thought well that's it you know I, I guess I retire now. <laughs> oh my God! Okay, <laughs> you started later. I'm 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 done. <laughs> I'm done. And, and then and then I um I decided to go on vacation to New York just just to do some auditions and see how before I really you know hang up my shoes to see really where I stand in the world. You know, yeah. could I could I have been a dancer anywhere else? Could I did I have that ability? So I went to some auditions, knowing you know I couldn't get into any shows because I had no green card. Yeah. But I did go to um, an audition for a show in Monte Carlo, and and I got that job. And I thought, okay, one last contract. That's what ah. I'm going to. do. So ah. I went to Monte Carlo, and actually, while I was, I did the summer season there at the sporting club, and um, and while I was there, I started singing. Um, I started uh, the 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 musical director of the show became a wonderful friend of mine and uh, he wrote a lot of songs and so we used to mess around at the piano singing and, and he said you really should audition for the for the cabaret in the winter winter season at Monte Carlo and um, so I you know I had nothing to lose so I auditioned and I got the job wow. and I ended up staying for two years and that was really the beginning of my singing career and there would you dance and sing as well how was yes. that sing and dance well they had um they had uh, a lot of dancers from england and and paris that came down but um it was a male and female singer and that was me and and, and another guy and and we had to dance as well yes yeah. so that, that was a good training <laughs> great yeah because that that's an is an amazing experience of course as a dancer is nice to be on stage but when you put it together the acting and singing is just like you i don't know i, I feel like you you that kind of of uh, artist that your eyes already shine just thinking about oh. of you on stage dancing and singing so that's thank amazing. you thank you um i i guess um you know training classically really sets you up for the kind of discipline it takes yes. to do something well obviously in, in all walks of life but when i realized that i actually could sing or, or, or when i well, let me put it this way. You don't just can sing or can't sing. You have to train for it. Yeah. And I realized there was enough of an ability to really expand on my voice. I, I really went for it, you know, and I um, I listened and I watched and I listened and I said, how do they make that sound? How do they do that? Um, so a lot of a lot of what I learned from there on, um, I don't want to say self-taught because I just copied everybody. I copied as many singers as I could to try and figure out how they make the sound. And um, and that changed everything for me, you know, and so I was very diligent about, about that. Um, and then it's, you know, so my voice got stronger and stronger and stronger and... and uh, you became and more I, confident, right? And more confident and, and I would never have known that I would have been a singer. Wow. And then, then they came, because there was always a time during those years, because I did... After Monte Carlo, I did a lot of big musical extravaganzas all over the world. So I traveled a lot, you know, probably about 15, 20 years. But um, during that time, I um, 
my voice got stronger and stronger and uh, and it's still I had no thought of going into musical theater it wasn't it wasn't even in my agenda it wasn't something I, I it wasn't that I didn't want to do it I just didn't know anything about it yeah, <laughs> yeah. just like the, 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 the first too, dancing show exactly. isn't it yeah and I was having a great time you know why would I why would I go and do something else Amazing. And then in 2001, you were in London. That story for me is amazing. Can you explain to me how did you get the, the, the tour of Chicago in 2001? Well, um, I had been doing a number of one woman shows back in South Africa. And um, I was actually doing one of my shows in Johannesburg. And a British director came out to produce Grease, the musical. And he did this huge, huge production of it, and they couldn't find a Sandy. So I guess I was, you know, like a last, uh, last resort. Let's try her. Um, <laughs> they called me. Called me. I'd never done. You know, nobody. Everybody knew I wasn't a mus musical theatre performer. So uh, they called me up and said, "Come and please come and audition." And I thought I would maybe audition for Rizzo. Um, and then they asked me to sing some of the Sandy songs, which of course I knew, you know, from yeah. other shows and, and, and my own stuff. And I did, and, and I got the job as Sandy, which was bizarre because I was over 40 already. Oh my God. And, and uh, but, you know, I figured, well, we're going to be doing this in a stadium, at the huge stadium. Nobody will yeah. be able to tell. Far. <laughs> then, they, then they put up these huge um, screens. Screens. <laughs> Really close up like, in oh, your well, face. There you go. <laughs> uh, so, but anyway, that director, um, I looked him up on a trip I went to London. And I said, you know, hey, I've, my husband is being um, transferred to London. Uh, you know, can you help me get an agent? And, um, and he said, you know what? Um, I know somebody that you should go and see. And I went to go and see this guy. And I had a book of pictures of myself. And one of them had a bowler hat, you know, sitting there and he said hey they're um they're doing they're in the final phases of auditions for chicago do you want to go <laughs> and i was like Sh oh, okay <laughs> why not i'm here already <laughs> so i went and um and i got i got Velma, and i went what just happened you know and and the, i'm the, well, even then i didn't realize i'd really hit the big time you know i was still sort of, you know, in a bit of a dream world, I guess. But I got the job, that was 2001. Um, and that's when I started learning how to act, really. Learning. Yeah, that's what I want to ask, because suddenly you, you were in a musical theater uh, yes. uh, person, and then suddenly you get like a lead role in one of the, the best shows for, for women that are, are out there, because it's, it's a really strong part. And yes. how did you... Did you approach the, 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 to study the character once you got the part? How was that, that process? Well, interestingly, when I saw the show, uh, and I saw it just before I went into the audition, um, I, thought, I thought if I was ever going to be anybody in that show, I would be Roxy. You know, because I saw myself a certain way. I saw myself as spontaneous and playful. And... and <laughs> <laughs> Not so much, though. Yeah. <laughs> and so they took one look at me and went, oh, Velma, you know, <laughs> definitely Velma. So they saw something in me that uh, I still had to learn about and explore. Um, and so it was a, I think it was, it was a very hard process because um, I had to start reading books about it, learning what people did. How did they... How did they find this? I had incredible mentors at the time, Gary Christ. Yes, amazing Gary Christ. And Scott Ferris, you know, they were... Uh, uh, yeah, they, they were the ones who did in Brazil the first time, Scott oh, Ferris. Really? And, yeah, how amazing. And they, they really guided me. I know they knew that I was, um, I was a cabaret performer. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I'm sure I was terrible, just terrible. <laughs> But Gary has been a mentor to me ever since all these years, 20 years later. Oh, he's, he's such um, a sweetheart. Every step along the way, he, you know, if he's found me slipping, he'll come backstage and he'll go. Yeah, to, uh, yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah. You need to talk, yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and 
and and uh, yeah, I don't think I could have done it without him, frankly, all these years, or, or kept it up, you know. And then suddenly you were on tour doing Chicago uh, yeah, for the first tour. time. Yes, 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 yes. And then when did it happen your second opportunity of Chicago? Because then you finished that concert and you were living in London at that time or what? I Yes, we, during that time we I had moved to London. Um, and I, I was really, really green and uh, young in theater. Even though I was older, I was young in theater. I didn't know a lot. I didn't know how hard it is to be in this business to get a job because I got it so easily. And then the year after I got Chicago, I thought, that's it. I'm now, I'm now an actor. I'm going to go into every show. Yeah. <laughs> and it took me a year of realizing what this business is about and how hard it is to get into a show how difficult it is to audition and i didn't know any of these things i had to learn it and that was the year of of learning and crying and pulling my hair out and trying to go you know but i but i've done this so what's the problem here you know but i had to learn i had to learn and i had to be humbled and i had to go okay now 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 i have to figure out how this works and and that's what i did that that year was how i figured out what i had done you know what what theater was about and how lucky i was to have made it that far without really trying wow. you know and um so i started to really get serious about um about how this works and, and what to do and how to learn and I, i went to acting lessons i went to singing lessons i went to dance lessons i did everything And then, um, and then a year later, I did the uh, a European tour, um, and then the South African tour, and that's uh, that's when I met my husband, who's a drummer, and he was on the on the on the show. Yeah. My third husband. <laughs> I know you're thinking the farmer. No, not the no, farmer. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Uh, and uh, so, um, so we were in South Africa, and we were doing the show there when Fran and Barry Wise became. Cape Town. They had never been to Cape Town. They wanted to tour the wine farms and so on. And of course, they'd you know they'd gone around the world, seeing the shows here and there, and you know they go and see the show and then they go back and and they. Yeah. Anyway, they came to see the show, and Fran and Barry said to me that uh, that night after the show, we're taking you to Broadway. Wow. I know, and I, I you know so that's that's how it happened. It, it was just amazing. But before that, how it was to go back to South Africa doing a show as a lead uh, uh, actress? How, how was that for you? The experience to be back at hometown, like, but doing Chicago, how was that for you? It was it was quite a strange feeling because I hadn't really made an, a name for myself in musical theater in South Africa. Um, I was quite well known in the cabaret scene, in the uh, in the dance scene, you know, but not in in theater. And so I think a lot of people went, "Who is this <laughs> South African? Who is she? <laughs> is she South <laughs> African? Really? <laughs> Never seen." <laughs> but I quickly made a name for myself, and, um, wow. and I had a lot of amazing publicity. And as a result, um, a few years later, I went back again, and of course, it was a whole different story that time. So, um, yeah, that's amazing. And then suddenly you were on Broadway, and then yeah. that's another different feeling. It's it's amazing how one show could take you to so many places that you never imagined, right? Oh my gosh! Oh yeah, all over. I mean, every continent. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I will get there. I will get there. <laughs> I will um, get there. But uh, I guess when when I saw the show on Broadway for the first time, it was almost as if I went, "Oh, that's what the show is," and not because, and I have to put this quite delicately, it's not that they were better. It was American. It's an American show. Very it's an American, American. story. There's a there's a grittiness to it. There's a knowingness. There's a knowing what the story is, who they are, who these characters are, um, and that that it, it's it's so subtle, but it's so tangible and and uh, 
so I, I understood immediately that there's more work to be done. <laughs> 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 but I, I also realized, I guess, um, you know, every, by that time I knew what, you know, how, what, what a big deal it would be to go to Broadway. But uh, that first night, my opening night on Broadway, I, I was terrified and I thought, gosh, uh, this is it. I'm, I'm, there's nowhere else to go from here. This is it. And that was a that was a, a very new feeling for me. Wow. And then how was that thing of like, you know, you were used to do the show, but how do you keep it fresh doing eight shows a week? How, how was that? And to keep fit the body as well, because Velma, it's such a strong track. You take the, the chair up and down and you have all the, the dancers carrying you around. How did you how did you cope with that? Um, I, I think, uh, first of all, I have to say that, that I've been blessed with a, with a strong body. Um, and I, I, over the years, I think I, I might have had one or two injuries, but that's it. Wow. Um, so I, <clears throat> I think that's, that's one thing. I have a, um, a very good work ethic and discipline. So I do a ballet bar every night before the show. Um, I eat well, I sleep well. I, you know, um, I don't do a lot of other things other than the show as far as physical, because I felt the show was enough. I and I knew what I had to do physically to make sure that by the time, but when I did the show at night, I hadn't hurt myself doing something else. So I, I'm very diligent about how I maintain my body. Um, it, you know, I, I think it just, it kind of came naturally to know that, that this is, this is what I have to do to stay here. Um, I've never ever marked a show and I've never been anything but 100, 100% there in the number. And I think if that's the case, there's very little chance of you uh, really um, hurting yourself if you're present all the time, because you're not going to, you know, try something new. Oh, oh no, no, that's not true. I, in acting, you're always trying something new, but this, you, you're not going to you're not going to lose focus. You're going to, if you're totally focused on what you're doing all the time, you're aware. So that's, I guess, physically, that's, that's the one thing I'm, I'm kind of, you know, saying this, making this up as I go along, because I'm trying to figure out how is it that I managed to do that all those years. When I look at it now, and I've been, you know, out off, off the stage now for since March, and um, I miss it so much. My body misses it. Oh, I can imagine. Um, having said that, I mean, my husband will testify to this, that I've come home times when I went, that's it, I'm done. You know, I can't do, <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it anymore. <laughs> but um, I, that's the physical side of it. I, I just, I, I've kept working at it. But, you know, I think it takes more than just the physical. It takes the emotional as well. Yes. Um, and I think you have to have a uh, strong emotional character to, to be able to maintain the same show. Having said that, it is Chicago. It's not Cats. Yes. It's not any other show. Yeah, yeah. And Chicago has the ability to constantly um, challenge you because it's relevant all the time. Um, you know, everything that's going on in the world is in Chicago in one form or the other. Yeah. And so you can you can inject everything you hear every day into the show. Um, and I, I think it's testament to the show that, I, that I've been able to do it this long and keep it fresh. And because you were so used to do the show, did you have any night that you were like, you know, thinking about something else and you were like, oh, that was my cue and you were supposed to be <laughs> on stage <laughs> and you were off stage? I could lie and say, no, that has never happened. <laughs> <laughs> but it did happen once. I happened to be in South Africa, actually. And um, I don't know what happened. I, I, I think I just forgot which country I was in and what theater I was in. Oh, my and, God. Uh, and, in, you know, I, I was on my way back to the dressing room when I realized it's my cue to go, you know, on stage to, to have a, a scene with Mama Morton. <laughs> she managed to do the scene without me and you know present herself and it was the middle of the song i was horrified you know the, every actor will know that feeling of, yeah. of 
of just the sinking ship, you know, <laughs> that you will never ever recover from. <laughs> but you missed the scene. You didn't even get after. How did you? How did you do it? Uh, no, I, no. She, she. It was. Thank God, it was just a scene that she could actually, you know, carry on without it being too much of a big deal. Okay. Um, Interestingly, when I went back to South Africa, she did the same thing to me, not on purpose, though. Oh, how funny. <laughs> she didn't turn up for the seat. It was the same mama as well. And, uh, and, and we had a good laugh about that. But um, really, I think that's the only time. Um, and I, you know, I did the show in Japanese. So. Yeah, that's what was my, last, my, my next question. How, yeah. I mean, you've done so many times and then suddenly you learn the whole part in Japanese and sing in Japanese. How was that? I kina gentleman wa moi nai to se ladies that they bite the nami gaki wa suku hito tsuki to basu hinga nai no yo. They also made me this. It says uh, my name, and it says star over there. Actually, no. It just says to to Amrafe. Well. Oh. Oh, it, hard and very, very scary. Um, it was interesting how it came about. And whenever I go to Japan and I go there every time they do Chicago, um, not in, I don't do it in Japanese, I do it in English, but I've got a bit of a fan base there now because of yeah. having done it in Japanese. But um, the, the, the producer, who's a good friend now in Japan, said, you know, when we had this idea to bring one... Um, a Westerner into the Japanese production, we just thought nobody would do it. And but they threw the idea out to the wise list and said, you know, we've got this idea. We think it'll be a great thing. And they went, oh, no one's, no one's going to agree to do that. We'll ask Amra anyway, you know. <laughs> and I went, sure, I'll do it. <laughs> oh. Would you say that was the most challenge? Uh part of, of doing Chicago, do, would you say was the biggest uh, uh, accomplishment, accomplishment of, your, of your career in a way um, of like doing in such a different language? I wouldn't say it's been the biggest accomplishment. Uh, I, I, it was the most, one of the most challenging things I've ever done. Um, I don't, I can't, Im it, it wasn't, it's nothing I will ever do again <laughs> because it wasn't rewarding. It, it was hard. It was just hard. And the reason for that is because the culture of Japan, there's no room for, for error. You know, there's, you, you cannot make a mistake. Yes. Um, and I, I realized that on, we were having a dress rehearsal when I was there and I'd already now learned the show and I had um, been there for six weeks with a, with a dialect coach and I had literally learned every syllable in, 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 the, in the tone that it had to be yes. in. Yes. Um, and so I, you know, I knew it, I knew it, but I switched two syllables around and it threw me and, um, and I, I kind of found my way back again. But when I came off stage, I, in my usual fashion would go, oh my God, you should see what I did out there, you know, yeah. laughing yeah. and everybody else backstage was mortified for me. They, you know, they were really, they were, they were embarrassed for me. I wasn't embarrassed, but they were, you know, and that's when I thought, oh, I can't make a mistake here. This is an America. <laughs> in America. I cannot make a mistake. Wow. And uh, so I spent the whole night just going over and over and over and over. You know? <laughs> uh, and for how long you did the show there? I think it was about five weeks. That's a lot. Five weeks, something like that. Yeah. But I made so many amazing friends there. Um, you know, Chicago, I would never have imagined would give me this family all over the world. And literally family. I mean, you know, I, I, Ryoko Yonekura is who is the, the big star in, um, in Japan who plays Roxy. Oh, uh, Yoko, I just did a video of, because I'm doing the project with Tanya, with the, we did with the, 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 the Velmas, the yeah. Roxy's and the Velmas. And Yoko was in the video. She's such an amazing artist. Oh, my God. She is amazing. She is. Amazing. And, um, and I love her so much. And we've become very close friends. And, you know, the, the, the kind of connections that, that we've made in these places that we would never have made any other way. Um, have made my life so much richer. Um, yeah. 
Oh, that's Nostalgia. amazing. <laughs> yeah. And then before uh, it shut it down, Broadway, you were you were playing on Broadway, right? You were doing Velma on Broadway. And yeah. then what, what do you think is going to be uh, when it comes back? I, do you think you're going to be in the show? How is that? Are you, you arranging I anything? Know. I have no idea. Um, you know, all through the years, I've never expected that I would have another contract. I've, um, I've never assumed that it would carry on. So it would come to the end of a contract. And sometimes my contracts were four months, sometimes a year. I never knew what I was going, what was going to come my way. And I never, ever assumed that it would just automatically follow on. So when it came to the end of a contract, I thought, well, that would be it. And um, we'll see what's next. And then I'd get extended. And that's been going on for 20 years. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. If I had known, <laughs> you know, if yes. I had known, I would have made other plans for yes. you, know, whatever. But um, I guess I will wait and see. Um, I will. I feel strong still. Um, I, you know, I keeping myself fit. Uh, I don't know. It all depends on what they, which direction they want to go in. Because I'm older, and I don't. You know, I think playing with a young Roxy is a is a mistake. So if um, it depends on where they go, what direction they go with the show, um, I would I would be very happy if they want to take me back. But I would have to look at myself very critically as well and go, Do you want to? Could you? Are you? Are you? You know? Is is it? Is it good for for a, for an older older Velma now? Is it still? You know? Are women? younger now than they ever were at the age I am now, does it matter? Yeah. Maybe not. Wow. So it all depends on the producers. Do, do you have any dream roles that you still want to play? Oh, yeah, there's so many Sondheim women I would love to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I would love to play all of the, um, the sardonic bored women <laughs> of, a, <laughs> of a certain age you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing special but uh, i'm too old to play victor victoria and, and oh, that that's is role i had love to play but that would have been great but I, th i think i think what's interesting about where i am in my life now is that i'm finally reaching or have reached uh, an age where i feel like i've had enough life experience to play those kind of roles, um, to play them well. I, I don't think I would have been ready for them even five years ago, but I feel like I am now. I see. And now my last question is, if you, Emra, could go back to that young 27 years old that decided <laughs> to go into show business and you could look her in the eyes, what would you say to her? Just do it all again the same way. <laughs> because it's been a hell of a ride and and it's been fun every bit of it has been great fun i don't think there's anything i'd change maybe i would change some of the uncertainty but then again uncertainty is good sometimes you know you learn from those things without everything in its place where it's the way it has happened i wouldn't be who i am today and i'm a happy person so that's it That's amazing. I'm so inspired by your story and I'm sure people who are listening and watching will be inspired as well. I'm so thankful for this opportunity and I have no words to describe and hopefully soon, next time I'm in New York, I, I get to see you on stage and, and give you a hug if we That have the vaccine. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> It's been wonderful to meet you and, and speak to you and um, Good luck with, your, with, 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 uh, with the rest of your interviews. Thank you. Thank you so much. And have a nice evening.